Good morning, everybody. Uh, some forward-looking statements for your review. So before I get into the Japan gold story, I just wanted to touch on Japan and, and why Japan uh, as a gold exploration mining destination. Uh, geopolitical risk, probably second to none. Um, it's, it's at the highest uh, level of, uh, of safety uh, in Japan. Um, there is a, an outstanding history of high-grade gold mining that's occurred in Japan. Um, and there are a, a number of, um, of sources of, of incredibly detailed and accurate data that have been available to, uh, to new explorers there. There is a, a change in the mining law that occurred in 2012 that allowed foreign companies to come into Japan for the very first time, and we were the first mover uh, into that country. The backdrop has really been that in 1943, there were 76 active gold mines in Japan. Um, after the war, uh, 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 during the war, they closed the uh, 76 gold mines and they reallocated those resources to base metal mines and factories to support the war effort. And only 12 mines reopened after the war. Um, and most of the uh, mining houses and, uh, and uh, trading houses were um, abroad, bringing natural resources back to the country as opposed to exploring within the country. In terms of Japan gold and how we stand, um, we do have the first mover advantage in Japan. We were the first company in the world to go there uh, and to establish ourselves. Uh, we have 12 gold projects now uh, throughout Japan. And in addition to that, we have five lithocap or porphyry uh, projects that we've identified as well. Um, we'll be drilling this year, um, starting very shortly in June, on two major projects, one in the northern island of Hokkaido and one in the southern island of Kyushu. Newmont Gold Corp um, has recently become a strategic investor uh, in the company, owning 19.9%. And we also have institutional investors, RCF um, uh, Opportunities Fund from Denver, and two $300 billion Japanese funds that own a portion of the company as well. Japan is uh, made up of several major islands, um, Hokkaido being the North Island, uh, all the way down to Kyushu in the south. Um, and this uh, slide just highlights some of the high-grade uh, gold mines uh, that have historically been operational in the country. Um, after 2012, I mentioned that only 12 mines reopened, and they're highlighted here on this slide below the Hishikari mine, which was a more recent discovery in 1981. Um, the takeaway from those 12 mines are that they were scattered throughout the country. They had high-grade gold, um, significant gold production, and they were all closed uh, by the mid-1970s. So there's been a real lack of exploration throughout the country since that time. The Hishikari mine, uh, many people are now becoming aware of it if they hadn't been before. It's one of the, the highest grade gold mines in the world um, with a uh, resource of 8.4 million ounces. Uh, they've, they've already extracted 7.6 million ounces at an average of 30 to 40 grams per ton and there's significant reserves remaining. We have a substantial portfolio. We have 12 gold projects, 10 in Hokkaido and two in Kyushu and five lithocap projects. Focusing on Kyushu for a moment, um, there's two light green areas highlighted on this slide. Um, I'll focus on the southern area. Uh, the Hishikari mine is centered in the, in the middle uh, to east side of that light green area. And our two projects are uh, north and south of, uh, of that. The project that we're focusing on with our first drilling program in Kyushu is the uh, Ora Takamani project. Um, this is a slide that highlights that, that district uh, around Hishikari. It's called the Hosh uh, Hokusatsu Kushikino uh, district. Um, it's had prolific production of over 12 million ounces throughout that district at very high grades. Um, there are a number of uh, mines that are highlighted on this slide. And uh, what we've done is we've picked up the Ora Takamani project, and I'll show you why. The Orta Kamini project, we picked up the central or the core area uh, because it covered three uh, small historic mines and then more recently we acquired uh, land uh, at either ends of that project to acquire two additional historic mines as well. This is a very similar setting to the Hishikari mine which was discovered under four little um, historic mines, uh, very shallow mines uh, in their area. Um, and where the drilling uh, demonstrated that at the volcanic basement interface, there was uh, better um, uh, reserves or resources to be found. And that's what we're targeting here. This is an overview of the, the three mines uh, in the central core area that we'll be targeting. 
and um, we have a series of holes that will be going through that area um, starting again in June. We're well established there as well. So, um, now we're moving to Hokkaido. Um, the light green area, the U-shaped area, is the, um, the area of uh, most positive geology. Um, it's called the Katami Metallogenic Province, and you can see nine of our ten uh, gold projects in Kyushu, or in Hokkaido, pardon me, are located there. Um, I'm going to focus you on one of our projects called the Akutahara Project. Some of you may have seen this slide before, but in a small area of 190 square kilometers, there are 17 high-grade underground and, uh, and, and shallow working mines, high-grade mines, that uh, were closed in 1943 and never reopened. So a very concentrated area of gold production. In the uh, red oval that's highlighted there, there are six mines, which were mines that um, we've now identified as being part of one large system that runs about six uh, kilometers north-south and about two kilometers east-west. Uh, here are just some samples of several of the different grab samples we've taken from the, uh, the projects that are inside that Catano Gold District that was highlighted in that oval. This is also a, uh, a geological model that was prepared by Dick Silito. Um, you see this in a number of areas around the world, but it was actually prepared in 1992 specifically over our Kudahara project area, and our work is, has borne out that it's uh, been quite accurate. Um, here I am standing on top of the uh, sinter, a, a very thick layer of sinter that uh, covers the whole Catano project uh, where um, gold was lightly interbedded in the sinter, but at the base of the sinter there was quite a thick clay layer um, carrying about six grams per ton, and 100,000 ounces of gold was actually extract extracted from that area. We're looking for things that are a little bit deeper. Um, so over this big Catano hill that we're going after, um, we are doing a scissor set of holes across about one and a half kilometers that are targeting uh, about 200 to 250 meter depth um, areas below the center to find the high grade shoots that we think exist in this hillside. And this program is starting in June as well. We have a very strong uh, board of directors, including one of the former um, senior executives of Sumitomo Corporation, the head of the Global Minerals Division. We also have a very strong management team, which includes the former head of global exploration for Sumitomo Metal Mining. And we have two um, advisors that are well known to this community, Doug Kerwin and Steve Garwin. Our strengths, um, we're the first mover into Japan. We have 12 gold projects there. Um, we are advancing these gold projects in an area that really hasn't been um, evaluated or explored um, ever or for a very, very long time. We're using modern technology to do that. It's a very safe jurisdiction, and so we can really focus on, on the operations of, a, of running a mining company and not geopolitical risk. Our team's got a very strong track record of uh, building uh, junior mining companies in the past and going right through to opening mines. Um, we have a very, um, a, a very uh, strong uh, program ahead of us just uh, in June, dr uh, drilling our two major project areas. Um, and we think uh, it's an important time in our company's history to really uh, uh, identify what we've got in our projects and uh, showcase what we can do going forward. So thank you very much. And I'll One comment just before I stop. I realize the, the bell hasn't gone yet. Um, I will just go back if I can. Um, if, oh, if I can't, that's okay. Um, just to our share ownership. I should have touched on that, and I, I, they did throw in one slide at the end. So about 70% of our company is held by the following. Management owns 32% of the company. Um, thanks for that. Management owns 32% of the company. Um, Newmont Gold Corp, 19.9%. RCF, 8.8%. The Japanese funds at 8.8%. Uh, so we've got a very um, solid share structure. And our market capitalization is about $27 million. Thank you.